The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Terror Stricken. Fear can become a terrible thing. Gangrenous, disintegrating, warping, twisting, gnawing at a man's mind until he's conscious of nothing else but its presence. That was the kind of fear that took hold of Benjamin Reynolds. And oddly enough, it was the natural outgrowth of the very thing that started him on the road to success. There was a trial, an important trial. There were big names involved, particularly the name of Andrew Miller the accused. And at that trial, ten years ago, young Benny Reynolds, investment clerk, just out of college, became Benjamin Reynolds, star witness for the prosecution. And uh, he was a good witness. Investment bankers in San Francisco and Wall Street in London glanced at the headlines and commented that this time, because of Benjamin Reynolds, Andrew Miller and his crowd were washed up for good. They were right. Order, please. Order in the court. Will the prisoner face the bench? Andrew Miller, you have been found guilty of the charge of grand larceny. I therefore sentence you to be confined within the state prison for a term of ten years. Bailiff, remove the prisoner. You dirty rat, Reynolds! I'll get you for this! Yes, Benjamin, that was the big break. Overnight, you became the banker's champion, the man who almost single-handedly broke up the Miller crowd. Today, just ten years later, you're head of the Rental Investment Company, a pillar of the community. It's a nice morning as you sit at the desk in your private office, looking at reports. Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, Joan, will you send Mr. Barton in, please? Yes, sir. 46,000 Allen account. Well, that can't be right. Gross commissions, charge... Oh, wait a minute now. I know that's wrong. You wanted to see me, Ben? Uh, yes, Ralph. Uh, these figures, are you sure they're correct? Of course. I prepared the statement myself. Oh. Well, things like this don't do my heart any good, Ralph. Uh, sit, sit down, will you? Oh, sure. I'm sure there must be a mistake somewhere. I don't think so. But of course it's possible. Well, suppose you recheck them, eh? Just to be sure. Well, that's a big job. I'd have to go through all the records for the whole year again. I wouldn't ask you if I didn't think it was important. Well, uh, perhaps I ought to call in the Monroe Auditing Company. No, I'll do it, Ben. No use taking on that expense. Well, all right, if you can have it by next Monday. Otherwise, I'll have to call Monroe. I've got to have those figures for the director's meeting. I'll have them for you. Uh, by the way, Ben, have you seen the papers? Yes, I glanced through them at breakfast. Did you by any chance... See this? Oh. oh, yes, I missed that. Among those released from state prison today is Andrew Miller, convicted ten years ago of grand larceny in a trial that caused worldwide comment in financial circles. <coughs> Remember him? 
What do you think? I remember what he said when the judge sentenced him. Yeah. Does it make you a little nervous, Ben? I mean, just knowing the man is on the loose again? I doubt very much if Andy Miller will do anything that will send him up again. (laughs) Still, you never know, do you? No, Benjamin, you never know, do you? Andy Miller wouldn't think of making good on his promise. Or uh, would he? Somehow you can't concentrate. Find yourself thinking about it, wondering, walking to the water cooler in the corner of your office every five minutes, wiping perspiration from your forehead until your handkerchief is soggy. And the next morning, it's worse as you answer your morning mail. Your order for 100 shares of consolidated power and light at the market, thereby acknowledged and... Say, uh, that was consolidated, wasn't it? I think it was Southern California Edison. Oh, Yes, uh, make it Edison, then. And uh, will be executed immediately, very truly yours. Let's see, we took care of McDonald. And, uh, what's this? You rat. I'll get you, and don't forget it. What? She had the nerve to sign it. What's the matter? Where's the envelope to this thing? Why, Vera takes them off and... Get Vera in here right away. Well, she's out on an errand for Mr. Barton. All right, then, get Barton. Yes, sir. And don't forget it. Andrew Miller. Of all the crosstalk. You sent for me, Ben? Yes. Take a look at this. Hmm. Same word he used at the trial. That guy must be crazy. He signed it himself. What do you make of it? I don't know. Didn't lose any time, did he? I think he's trying to bluff you. Or maybe he didn't write it. Oh, he wrote it all right. I don't know. It's pretty fantastic after ten years. But in view of the threatening tone, I'd certainly check to see if it's genuine. Yes? Yes? Vera's here, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, Send her in, please. Well, we'll see what she knows about it. You want to see me, Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Uh, Vera, did you notice this letter in the morning mail? Well, I don't read the mail, Mr. Reynolds. I just open it and put it on your desk. I've instructed them not to read company mail, Ben. Oh, of course. Well, I might remember it if I saw the envelope. Yes, Mr. Reynolds? Have the wastebasket containing the envelopes from today's mail brought into my office, will you? I'm sorry, Mr. Reynolds. The janitor emptied all the wastebaskets an hour ago. Oh, very well. What are you going to do now? Well, I... I guess there's nothing I can do but call the police. With the prologue of Terror Stricken, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. If you've been reading the new car ads, and who hasn't, you've no doubt noticed the emphasis that's being put on increased mileage. 25 to 30 miles per gallon from some of the new models. Now, why do you suppose this is? Is it because folks today are interested in making dollars go farther? Well, partly. But even more so, they're interested in the increased engineering efficiency which makes that greater mileage possible. Yes, and right there you have the reason why Signal Oil Company is so proud of the fact that you now go farther than ever with new Signal gasoline. You see, Signal's improved mileage is the result of increased power, amazing new power. The same power that gives new Signal gasoline quicker starting, faster pickup, and quieter, higher anti-knock. That's why we say... Look to your speedometer for the final measure of gasoline quality. You'll find that the super-powered new gasoline that gives you peak performance is also the gasoline that now helps you go farther than ever. New Signal Gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. The price tag on that testimony you delivered so efficiently at the trial of Andrew Miller ten years ago, and you're beginning to pay for it now. The police don't help much. All you can do is swear out a warrant for Miller's arrest and leave the rest up to them. 
They can't do a thing about that weak heart of yours. Stop it from pounding every time someone comes to the door. And they can't bring your appetite back or help you to sleep at night. It's later than usual when you arrive at the office next day. Ralph Barton's busy on the books as you go into your office. Hang up your hat and go over to the water cooler for a drink. I guess I'd... Help! Help! Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Help! Mr. Reynolds, find the... Oh, Mr. Reynolds! Vera, Dr. Crane's in the next office. Get him, hurry. Oh, yes, sure, right away. Now, what's going on here? Mr. Reynolds, what's happened? He came in when he called for help. Get a doctor. Here's all you gone for one. What's keeping her? There's a doctor right down the hall. She'll be back in a minute. That isn't soon enough. Oh, but it takes some time. Don't you realize every second counts? Oh, here she comes now. Right in here, Dr. Crane. Stand back. Stand back, yes. please. Yes, yes, give him room. Doctor, is it serious? Hmm. Can't tell yet. Looks very much like some form of poisoning. That was a close call, wasn't it, Benjamin? When you leave the hospital that night, you're still weak. Positive now that Miller means business. The police report that afternoon. Poison in the water cooler. Just enough to knock a man out. No fingerprints. No way of knowing how Miller could have entered the office without being seen. Nothing they can tell you except to carry on, as usual. For the next two days, you find yourself waiting for it. Tense expectant, but nothing happens, and you begin to relax a little, to believe what the police lieutenant said about Miller being too smart to try it again. Perhaps they're right, Benjamin. Perhaps what you need is a change, a dinner out with your wife Sally at a restaurant on 6th Street. Ben, dear. Ben. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Sally. I, I was thinking... Oh, please try and forget it, darling. Oh, the whole thing's ridiculous. The man wouldn't have to take a chance like that. Oh, there must have been a mistake at the bottling company or something. Of course, dear. Now let's forget it, huh? But you're as fidgety as a cat. No, I'm not. But I am hungry. Ben, do you mean it? <laughs> of course I do. Why? Oh, because you've hardly touched your meals the last few days. Oh, well, let's order, huh? I'm starved. Well, what do we start with? Well, what about a shrimp cocktail, hmm? Wonderful. <laughs> then, uh, mixed green salad? And a sirloin for two. Medium rare. <laughs> oh, Ben, darling. Oh, oh, darling, are you all hey, right? Uh, I'm, I'm the manager. Oh. You hurt? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm all right. It, it, it missed me. See there in the, oh, in the wall? Oh, good Lord. Well, I don't know how. That Who it... did it? Oh, I don't know, sir. I, it came from over there somewhere. Well, don't stand there with your mouth open. Call the police. Well, of course, right away. Come on. Come on, Sally. Uh, Let's get out of here. Yes, darling. <laughs> Well, whoever fired that shot meant business, didn't he, Benjamin? Your heart's pounding like a trip hammer again as you walk out of the nightclub. The hole in the wall was six inches from your head, and that's awfully close. Your heart almost stopped, didn't it? You're terror-stricken. You jump at every sound. And then you wonder why Miller doesn't come right out and kill you. But you remember he's had ten long years to plan his revenge. No, sudden death would be too easy. He wants to make you suffer. Of course, sleep is out of the question. Even the powders the doctor gave you have little effect on your frenzied nerves. You imagine all kinds of things as you lie there in bed. Ben. Yes? Ben, why is he trying to kill you? Please, Sally, let's not talk well, first about it. first the poison water and the trip to the hospital, then that shot tonight. Yeah. Oh, but Ben, the, the police will catch him soon. He can't. Talk. I, I just hope it's soon enough. Oh, sure. Uh, oh, that's the door. I wonder who in the world. Well, no, lie, lie still, darling. I'll get no, it. No, no, no. Well, I'll get it. Right. Yeah. Hold your horses. I'm coming. Oh, what do you want? What do I want? Yes, that's what I said. What do you want? I'm calling for the remains of the dear departed. Are you drunk? No, I, I don't think so. Now, now, look, it's cold here at the door. Hurry and state your business, please. I did. 
I was sent to call for the mortal remains of... Man alive, will you talk sense? I haven't time for foolishness. This is 1620 Runyon Avenue, isn't it? Yes, it is. Then it's the right place. Who sent you, anyway? The Gold Hills Mortuary. Now, do you understand? No, I don't. There must be some mistake. The party on the phone was very explicit. He said 1620 Runyon Avenue. The remains of the late Benjamin Reynolds. That's not funny, mister. I... I'm Benjamin Reynolds. Oh. Now, get out. Get out of the body of Benjamin Reynolds. We'll give you a very black eye. I... Oh. What's going to happen next? How much more can you stand, Benjamin, before your heart gives out completely? You can't eat. You can't sleep. You almost jump out of your skin at the slightest sound. Miller is getting his revenge. He must be enjoying it immensely. Sally makes you rest all day Sunday, but you're still befuddled. You can't even talk straight anymore. You stutter. Monday morning, you decide to walk to the office. You want to try to think. Yes, that's it. Walk and try to think. Look out! Officer! Officer! That blue sedan tried to run this man down! Hey, hey! What's going on? The guy in the blue sedan tried to run over this man! Are you hurt, mister? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm, a, I'm a, all right. Hey, the devil you say, you shake him like a leaf. Oh, soon, soon as my nerves quiet yeah. down, I... Them that saw it seemed to think it was a deliberate attempt to kill you. Yes, I, I think so, too. Uh, any idea who might be trying to kill you? Sure. Andy Miller. Yeah, okay. Uh, now i got to make a report of this. Uh, what's your name? Ben... Benjamin Reynolds. Benjamin Reynolds. Oh, you better see a doctor, Mr. Reynolds. Joe, you're in bad shape. I, I'll be all right. Yeah, i better send you home in a cab. Uh, you're in no condition to walk. Uh, Another close call, and you're scared almost to death, aren't you? You wonder how much longer your heart will be able to stand it. Not much longer now. You tremble so violently you can't even light a cigarette. Even at home, you can't sit still. You pace the floor back and forth all day long until finally night comes. You can't sleep. You toss and turn. Yes, the days are bad. But the nights are filled with terror. Who, who's there? Ben, dear. I said, who's there? Oh, it was nothing, honey. Oh, oh. Who, who, what's that? What's that? Oh, stop it. Who are yes. you? Why don't you answer? Oh, it's only the shutter. Oh, Ben, don't be so jumpy. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, yes, of course. Oh. Only the shutter. <laughs> It was only the shutter, wasn't it, Ben? But all the noises in the night have a sinister meaning, haven't they? After what seems like hours, exhaustion finally takes over. and You've just fallen asleep when... <laughs> Who's, at the... Who's at the door at this hour? Ben, dear, don't huh? be frightened, darling. It's not the door, it's the phone. Oh. Oh, oh the phone. Yes. Yeah. Who the devil can that be? I... I'll give them a piece of my mind. Hello. Is this Benjamin Reynolds? Y yes, it is. What's the big idea of calling me at this hour of the night? Don't you know? No, and I don't care. Oh, yes, you do. You got a letter the other day, remember? Andrew Miller. Why, how'd you guess? <coughs> I'm going to get you, remember? Say, 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 wait a minute. You haven't much time left to live, wait. Reynolds. It's coming tomorrow. But, but, hello? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh. Hung up. Oh. Operator. Uh, trace that call quick, please. What is your number? Uh, Morningside 1024. On hurry, please. One moment, please. Hurry, hurry. What number did you call? 
I didn't call any number. They called me. Do you know the other party's number? No, I don't. That's why I asked you to trace the call. Please hurry. There is no one connected with your number now. I know. I know they hung up. Can't you hurry? I want to trace the call that was connected with his phone. Please. I'm sorry, but after the other party has hung up, it is impossible to trace the call. Oh. <laughs> Very well. Say. I wonder... I wonder if my hunch... Uh, hey. I'll see. I'll see. Hello? Hello, Barton. This is Reynolds. What the deuce makes you call me at this time of the night? Barton. Andrew Miller called. He, he said I haven't much time to live. Is that so? Yes, and I'm at my wit's end... What can I do? He's coming here, Ralph. Lord knows what he'll do to me. What do you mean he's coming there? Well, he just told me. Mm. (laughs) You can't take this much longer, Ben. Why don't you call the police? Well, I've called the police a dozen times. I tell you Miller's too clever for them, Ralph. Then there's only one thing to do. Get out. Yes, but he'd follow me. He he knows where... He hasn't checked me. Now, look, it's out of the question for you to stay there under the circumstances. I'll be over in the morning, and we'll go up to my cabin for a few days. You've got to get a complete rest. Yes, you're... You're, you're absolutely right, Ralph. I, I've simply got to... And listen. There's someone tipping that guy off on your movements. This time, make sure. Don't tell anyone where you're going. Well, yes, yes, but, but what about Sally? Tell her you're off on a business trip or something. Uh, yeah, that's it. The convention starts tomorrow in Cedar City. If necessary, you can call her later from the cabin. Yeah, yeah. All, all right, Ralph. I'll pick you up in front of the signal station at Runyon and Broadmoor tomorrow morning at 8, right? Right, right. <laughs> How much farther, Ralph? About 14 miles. Hey, the old heart's banging away again. Doctor said 6,000 feet was my limit, you know. Well, we'll stay pretty well under that point. Oh, good. Boy, look at that view. You can see all the way back to... Hmm. What's the matter? So that's strange. There's that car again. You don't suppose he's following us, do you? Oh, probably one of the natives. I don't know. Wait a minute. You... You don't think Miller... You're sure you didn't tell anyone where you were going? Well, positive. I-, I will have to call Sally later, though. Yeah, sure. Hey, here's the spot where I always stop. You can get a good view clear back to the valley. How about it? Oh, great. Up this way. Yes, kind of steep, I... Better take it easy. Now, there's a level spot up here at the top. Well, you, you go ahead, Ralph. i got to watch myself in this altitude. Ah, get that air. You know, this is what I needed. Mountain air, sunshine, quiet. Hey, where are you? Up here. Come on. Huh? This is a real inspiration, Ralph. How'd you think of it? You mean this? Whew. I, I mean getting away from everything like this. One sniff of that air and a fellow forgets he ever had any worries. Hey, look over here. Hey, now, hey, now take it easy. <laughs> kind of close to that edge, you know. Look, Ben. 1,500 feet straight down. Yeah, I'd just as soon stay back here if you don't mind. What's the matter, Ben? Afraid? No, just sensible, that's all. You know, funny thing about me in high places, it seems You to... ought to be afraid, Ben. That's where you're going. 1,500 feet straight down. <laughs> Well, that's good, 50. You're... You're serious, aren't you? I'd hate to have you call in the auditors, Ben. I was afraid that was it. There was something wrong with those figures. Yes, there was. But I learned something from Andy Miller. You're not going to be around to testify. You're going to have a dizzy spell... And they're going to find you 1,500 feet down there on those rocks. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's news about one of the first of the new post-war developments to make driving safer and more restful. 
You know how our bright western sunshine glares off pavements and off the windshields and polished chromium of other cars, causing eye strain that makes you squint and get headaches? Well, during the war, the Army and Navy used a new principle of glare control. It's called Polaroid. And unlike old-fashioned colored filters that darkened everything and changed the colors of flowers and scenery, Polaroid is as clear and colorless as your own windshield. But look through the Polaroid, and presto, all glare is gone. Now, here's the good news. This same Polaroid principle has been made into a visor for your car, and they're for sale for the first time on the Pacific Coast at your signal dealers. The Polaroid visor snaps onto your present visor in a jiffy. It's smart-looking, and it flips out of the way when you're not using it. If it's sunny tomorrow, drive into your signal dealers for a demonstration. When you see the wear and tear it saves on your eyes, my bet is you'll want to buy one of these Polaroid visors now to make your summer driving more pleasant. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Benjamin, you seem to be in a tight spot. Just the two of you there, alone at the top of the cliff. Barton, staring at you, white-faced and tense, his fists clenched at his sides. And oddly, you find yourself struggling to keep the smile inside you from showing on your face. It's probably only a few seconds, but it seems like an hour that the two of you stand there, silent. Then... Listen, Ralph. You hear that? The car? Yes. They won't stop. Sure he will. That's what they came for. What do you mean? There's a detective and two patrolmen in the car, Ralph. They followed us all the way from town. You're lying. You'd better restrain yourself for a minute and see. Of course, you could pull it off now if you wanted to, Ralph. But it'd be kind of foolish, wouldn't it? The embezzlement charge will put you away for only four or five years, with perhaps a few more for attempted murder, but... If you go ahead and... <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> you did it again. What? <laughs> that. It's a habit of yours, Ralph. Every time you're about to say something important, you clear your throat. <clears> throat> like that. That's why it hit me between the eyes last night when you called me and said, <clears throat> I'm going to get you. Remember? Come on, Ralph. Let's walk down to the road. We'll save the policeman a few steps. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Walter Jensen, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular Signal Oil stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 